person has truly opened their life to Christ is continued fellowship with Christ. But is it not true, and don't tell me it's not, countless millions of people, because of our preaching, walk around, they have no fellowship with Christ, no desire for godliness, no seeking of God, but they believe themselves converted because one time in one of our churches they prayed and asked Jesus to come in. That's true. Now let me share with you, I have 45 seconds left. One of the greatest moments of my life was a few clicks south of Alaska. Some of you may have heard this story. But a man, as soon as I got up in the pulpit, about 25 people, a man walked in, giant of a man, saddest human being I've ever seen in my life, and he came and sat down on the front row. I immediately just stopped and started preaching the gospel. After I finished, I went down. I said, sir, what's wrong with you? What is wrong? He pulled out a manila envelope, and he just showed it to him, and he said, I just came from the doctor. I'm going to die in three weeks. He said, I've lived out in the bush working on a working cattle ranch all my life. You can only get there by riding over the mountains or taking a float plane or something like that. He said, I've never been to a church in my life. I've never read a Bible. But one time I heard someone talking about a guy named Jesus, and, and I do believe there's a God. I've never been afraid of anything in my life, and I'm afraid because I'm going to die, and I don't know what to do. Now, I said, sir, for the last 45 minutes, I have preached the gospel to you. The good news of what God has done for sinners in Jesus Christ. Did you understand it? He said, yes. Now, what would have most evangelists done at that moment? Would you like to pray and ask Jesus to come into your heart? But this is what he said. Brother Paul, I understood it. I mean, anybody could have understood it. But is that it? Is that it? I understand it now, and I pray a prayer, and that's it. And I went and started explaining repentance and faith. And after several minutes, he looked at me and he says, I just don't get it. I said, look, you have three weeks to live. I have to leave tomorrow morning. I'll cancel my plane ticket and I'll stay with you for three weeks until you die. Either you're saved or you die and go to hell. So let's begin. Listen to me. If you're thinking about being an evangelist, don't think you're going to preach to a whole bunch of people. When they come forward, you pawn them off on everyone else to do the counseling and you go to Denny's to eat. And glory in all the decisions, most of which were just decisions and no one got converted because most of those people won't come back to church next Sunday. Now you understand, like Leonard Ravenhill used to say, now you understand why I preach in a lot of churches once. But I looked at that man and I said, Sir, faith cometh by hearing. Let's go through Scripture. We went through Scripture for over an hour. Every promise, Old Testament, New Testament, on and on. Just laboring until Christ be formed. We prayed some more. We read some more. Another hour goes on. It's getting late. I said, We're staying here. This man's dying. And then after I don't know how long, we got back to one of my favorite verses in the Bible, John 3, 16. And I said, sir, I'll never forget, because he had that Bible on his, on his legs, my Bible, and those big old hands of his. And I said, sir, let's just read through this again. He said, we've read through it so much. I said, sir, your life depends on it. And so he looked down, that big old man, and he goes, okay. For God... So loved the world that he gave. Oh, oh, I'm saved. I'm saved. All my sins are gone. I have, my hands are clean. I, I have eternal life. Oh my, I have it. I'm going to heaven. I said, sir, how do you know? He said, haven't you ever read this verse before? Do you see the difference? I, people say, are you against evangelism? I say, yes and no. I'm against your kind of evangelism. I hate it. That run men through, grab a little ticket, just like you were waiting at some government office for them to renew your license. Grab a ticket and go to heaven. 
We will be responsible. We are called upon. When I want to preach in meetings and people, this is what I do. I don't give big altar calls and stuff. I say, look, it's, it's over. If God's dealing with your heart, you come to me. We will sit here all night. And if someone professes faith in Christ, then what do I do? I don't go, oh, you're saved, you're saved. I tell him this. I said, listen, if tonight you have truly repented and believed in Jesus Christ, you have become a child of God, but this is going to be the evidence. If you have truly repented unto salvation, you will continue repenting unto salvation and growing in repentance. And if you have truly believed, you will continue believing. None of this flu shot stuff. I don't want someone walking up to that person 10 years later. They're living an ungodly life and someone witnessed to them and they say, oh, don't worry about me. I done did that. Because that's what most people do in the South, isn't it? Don't worry about me, preacher. I done did that. You done did what? I got my flu shot. Yeah, but you didn't get Jesus. You labor with them. Let everyone else go out to eat. You labor. You pray. You counsel them with many gospel promises and many gospel warnings. I have declared war. It's like a little mite beating his head against a world of granite, but I don't care. I'm sick and tired of people being led into a decision with very little knowledge of the gospel, trusting in a decision rather than looking unto Christ, living in ungodliness and believing they're saved because some religious authority in the evangelical community told them they were, and they're almost completely insulated now from hearing a true gospel. Stop it. Stop it.